What's up, Knights fam? Welcome to another episode of Knights at the Roundtable. This episode, we're going to be talking about expectations and how we place them on other people and the result of that being disappointment, heartbreak, and just all around not good relationships. We hope you listen through. And at the end, you'll be able to listen to my new song. We love you guys so much. Appreciate you. Here's Knights at the Roundtable. And welcome to another episode of Nights at the Round Table. It's your boy Manuel with the Queen Angela and the Hello. homie Be Real. Hello. Hey, today we are getting down. We are getting down with the Topo Chico. This Topo Chico is the best mineral water you will ever have. Sparkling. It's from Monterey, Mexico. And uh, B, you've been to Monterey, right? Yeah, Monterey, Mexico. If you haven't been or you haven't seen, look up some pictures. One of the most beautiful mountain ranges like ever. So people come from all around the world to climb and hike these. And Monterey, Mexico has, for me, one of the best all-time snacks I've ever had. So we played a team there back when I was living in Mexico. Flame Hot Cheetos? No. Hey, that's um, like a real Mexican. <laughs> hey, all the Mexicans I know. <laughs> yeah, relax. Hot Cheetos. First of all, you don't know us. So okay. it was like a baked potato, but mm. instead of having just the cheese and the fixings in it. Uh huh, talk to me. Oh. <laughs> you could put whatever meat you want inside. Oh. So you could put like al pastor, you could put mm -hmm. carne asada uh -huh. in it. In a potato? And, in a like a baked potato. Uh -huh. Interesting. And you crunch it up or whatever. You crunch? put salsa and yeah. all this sorts of stuff. And it was fire. And like you, where you get this at the street, like in the street. Yeah, I got it at a street mm. vendor when I was in Mexico, staying right outside our hotel. Man, you brave. Just and uh, oh no, like that's the thing about Mexico. Like a lot of these places, like little street vendors, it's cleaner food than it is here. Really? Yeah. Bruh. So like Just last time I ate, I have a higher chance of getting sick going to a fast food joint here than I do one of those street vendors in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Now again, this ain't. I'm not drinking whatever drink they're selling. Sure, sure. Okay. <laughs> But as far as the food, it's a lot cleaner. So Monterey has a special place in my heart because of the loaded, true baked potato. Baked potato. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The that true potato, potato changed my life that night. There ain't no chilies loaded baked potato. No. And typically we have wine on this podcast or a drink of choice, an alcoholic beverage. Mm -hmm. But this whole podcast was started based on what we do in our everyday life is we have our friends over the house, we break bread, we have wine, we talk about life, love, faith, we deconstruct, we ask the hard questions, we support each other, we're there for each other, we cry with each other, we're vulnerable with each other, and we always have wine, but we always have sparkling water like for the after wine we always have to have sparkling water and it's we love la Croix, we we have a soda stream machine yeah we do all the things so we love all the sparkling waters but this is our favorite this is the top shelf top they are not spinner, sponsoring spinner us by the way but, no, but we if you know are somebody, available if somebody knows somebody at topo <laughs> chico that wants to get spawned you know holler let it go um hey but for real though uh, season three, we're stepping up a lot right now. So not only are we doing top shelf uh, sparkling water, but we got merchandise now. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be able to buy it. If you look it on YouTube, you can buy it right underneath the description. Uh, and on top of that, uh, we got our friend Jakia over here. If you know my wife, Jakia Graham, uh, she's now helping us produce this show. Say what's up, Jakia. What's up, Jakia? And she's going to be... Uh, <laughs> She's going to be uh, interjecting. <laughs> to clarify, the sentence was, you know my wife, Jakia Graham. It's, you know my wife, <laughs> comma, Jaki, and I think the yeah. finished sentence was, works with Angela or works something with, yeah, like that. But you forgot you, that part. You know, I forgot it all? Just in case anyone's confused, not polygamy going on here. Yeah. Even though That's Jaki is my work wife. Yeah. yeah. So we're um, kind of polygamist. <laughs> <laughs> we're business polygamist. What's funny is I actually didn't catch any of that. I just did yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And rightly so, because you're, you're, like, your you're yeah. like everyone else who understood what I was saying. Anyways, <laughs> hey, this episode, we're getting down on um, letting go of expectations. Now, if you... If you don't know what that means, uh, what we're Cheers. what we're really going to break down is the expectations that you may have of mainly other people is really what we're talking about. We could talk about other things, but let's 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 zero this down mm. into other people uh -huh. because we were having an interesting conversation uh, before the podcast started, and this 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 uh, episode came from Brandon. Who is dealing with a situation in his life? So I'll let I'll let Brandon set the stage of what what we're gonna get down on. Yes. So this has been so liberating for me, and this is why I think this conversation is so important. Because again, 
Like, you know, it's like one of those things like, what's your biggest problem? My problem is I care too much, you know? Sure. But like that legitimately could be a problem of yeah. like when you cared so much that you you see so much potential in people, especially that you really love. And so you're like, oh, you could be this. And me being such an achiever and a motivator and I try and be like an inspiring figure or whatever, I want to push people to the potential that I see them. Mm-hmm. But sometimes this can get in the way. And this has gotten in the way, especially in the two closest male relationships in my life. My father and my best friend of, we're going on 20 years now, Jordan. Mm. And so last year was a super disappointing year for me in those friendships. So I'll address the, my dad actually relationship first. And so the reason that I w- I've been so disappointed is because now that my mom's back in my life, we're super tight. Our relationship is so much fun. Mm. Like I freaking love how my mom and I's dynamic is. <laughs> Excuse me. That, you know, there's always that weird transaction or not transaction, but transition when you are becoming adult and you are no longer just a little kid that's yeah. like mm-hmm. looking up to mom and dad. Right. Yeah. It's now of like, hey, we're peers actually. Mm-hmm. And we can see eye to eye on mm-hmm. things. And sometimes there's a little bit of this weird power struggle because parents are like, you're still my little boy. You're yeah, still yeah. my little girl. Yeah. Uh, you can't spank me anymore. So yeah. we both got bills. Yeah, we, we both got bills. Uh, you can't tell me what to do anymore. You know, <laughs> you and my. Then, You're not the boss of me no more. So, and then, and then as the as the son or the daughter or whatever, you're looking at them and you're like, "Hey, you actually don't get to influence or have really any say in how I choose to live my life." Mm-hmm. So there's always this weird dynamic. So now that my mom and I are like this really dope place, it's like we're learning together, we're growing together, we're like, we're trying out new things together. You know, like the fact, like one of my favorite moments last year was me and my mom sitting on my couch watching Harry Potter, drinking uh, moonshine. Nice. Like it was such a (laughs) random thing because both of us, we didn't drink and Harry Potter was demonic. So it was like, (laughs) it was this moment that you're like, oh my God, I've arrived. This is amazing. (laughs) And so, in hell. Yeah, <laughs> it was hot. <laughs> you have a, and so it's this unique thing because I'm thinking, oh my God, our relationship has now evolved into this really cool friendship. Yeah. Mm. And so with my dad, I'm thinking, oh man, maybe this relationship has the potential to grow into what my mom and I have. Mm. So there's this expectation of like, hey, I know you're a little bit more rigid than my mom, but I need you to be more like, more loose, more flexible. So our relationship can grow into kind of what I expect it to turn into. Yeah. Mm. Because my mom and I's relationship is really fun, but there's a lot of times where I'm around you and I feel like I have to censor myself. Like I have to turn myself down to make sure that you feel comfortable with me. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, oh man, I like, I want you to, I want you to be this. And I just kept feeling like, you know what? I just continue to feel disappointed in this relationship Mm. because I keep expecting you to be something that you are not. Yeah. And it's crazy too, because it's like, it's not even like I'm working against him just like, you know what? I just don't want to make the changes for you. But I'm like, I'm also looking at, he was the same guy before I was even on the scene. Mm. Like he's chosen to be that guy. And again, he has a lot of good. I'm just focusing on some of the expectations that I felt like I wanted him to be. He's not. Right. And so I finally got to the place of like really towards the end of last year where I realized, you know what? You're never going to be what I hope you would be. And that is okay. And I'm going to continue to feel disappointed. I'm going to continue to feel let down if I am still in denial of what reality is actually telling me. Yeah. And reality is telling me, Brandon, he's never going to be that guy, that you're never going to have the relationship that you have with your dad, that you have with your mom. It's never going to happen. And the sooner that I got to actually like accept that and drop the expectations, I found myself no longer being disappointed in our relationship or disappointed in him, that I actually can be like, you know what? I can actually accept for who you're choosing to be. And that's been so freeing. And again, with the relationship with Jordan, it's been a little bit different, you know? So again, we've been best friends for a super long time. We lived together at some point. We worked at the same place and we've just been boys. Like every high low, we've been together. And our relationship has definitely changed, especially when Maddie and I moved to LA. 
Because obviously, you know, that distance starts to affect friendships, you know? And like, it's this weird evolution of like, what is this going to turn into? Because at some point, the distance is going to continue to take its toll on this, on this friendship. Like, that's just a, that's, that's a truth. And so my friend Jordan, man, he is like one of the most talented dudes I know. Like, he is super creative. He is super charismatic. And I had this expectation. I'm like, yo, if Maddie and I are thriving here in LA, like, you would kill it in LA. Like, he's such a networker, really good at connection. And in my eyes, where he was living his life and what he was doing, I felt like, dude, you're failing to live up to your potential. And we'd have these conversations and he'd be like, yeah, man, you know, like, I think I'm going to come down. And then kind of like, no, I don't think I'm going to come down. Hey, I'm feeling like this change, but then a change kind of wouldn't really happen. And I just found myself time and time again, getting so like disappointed and just frustrated. I'm like, dude, just like, just, you know, and this is all based on me viewing him through my own worldview, my own context. Like we're wired completely different. Right, right. right. And so this was actually this week where I I started to just kind of like take inventory of myself, inventory of my relationships. And I realized like, whoa, I'm I'm starting to feel distance in this, you know? And so we had a conversation. I called him and I just said, hey, man, I like, I want to apologize. And I want to tell you something, you know, I realize that in our relationship right now, man, um, you might feel like you're disappointing me because I've had such high expectations of you. You know, and I want to let you know, man, that I am freeing you of any expectations that I may have of you. Mm -hmm. I am truly going to just embrace who you are choosing to be. And it's so crazy because a lot of times in our own lives, like we always take the high seat. We think we know what's best for everybody. You know, so I'm thinking like, yo, if you move to LA, if you're with this or whatever, I'm thinking this is the best decision for your life, even though it's not. That's super like whatever of me. But at the same time. Yeah. (laughs) I'm playing God. And so it was crazy because in that moment, he goes, man, thank you. This feels very freeing for me. Mm -hmm. And as he was saying that, I'm thinking, whoa, this is actually super freeing for me. Because when I've been carrying all these expectations of who I've hoped he could be or who I want him to be, it's like I'm seeing him at a high level, which is a healthy thing. Sure. But I'm carrying the burden like I have to get him there. Yeah. So as soon as I'm letting go of these expectations of who I'm hoping he can be, it's like I'm letting go now of that burden, which now actually means, sure, he's free, but it's more be I'm free. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And I've realized like as I'm letting go of these expectations of in these two relationships for me, like this was really less about them and more about me. Yeah. And this kind of shows even issues with me. So I think for a lot of time I was in denial because I wasn't really wanting to accept reality. Reality is... These two men in my life are choosing to be something different than what I expect them to be. That's the reality. Yep. And I could try and chop that up any way I can and be in denial of that. And the more that I'm in denial, I'm just going to continue to get disappointment from those relationships. Yeah. And I think even in so many other little ways in different relationships in our life, we have expectations. You know, marriage is one of those big things, which mm-hmm. I mean, one of you guys could speak on that, of like we come in with all these expectations of what we hope our spouse could be. I know coming into relationship, like as a virgin, as a church boy, I'm thinking, yo, sex is about to be the most fire thing yeah. ever. We're going to be having sex every day. Like, you know, I'm just like this like horny little Christian kid. And like not even <laughs> like not even thinking, hey, stress is going to take its toll on yeah, sex. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. you're going to be tired some days and sex is not going to be fire. Yeah. Like all these things. But it's so crazy because those expectations yeah. I had to let go of because I'm like, this is a completely new relationship right now. Mm-hmm. We have no idea what the hell we're doing. And we're just like choosing to grow each day. And so it's funny because it's taken me a while to actually let go of that expectation. And now sex is better now that I've let go of that expectation. Mm -hmm. You know, I've I've heard it say, uh, well, if if you're watching on YouTube, you can see this. But uh, somebody told me once that expectation is up here. It's a line that's way up here. And then reality is down here. And then everything in between is disappointment. And it was so deep to me because we we set these expectations based on whatever upbringing we have, whatever things that we have learned, whatever we have acquired. We were, I was just talking to Jaki about this. Uh, she was having a discussion with her husband 
uh, about certain things of how she was growing up and, and what seems normal to her, what seems obvious to her, doesn't isn't obvious to her husband. I've done the same thing with with Ange, where there's things that I just feel like, okay, for me, I'm super, I'm a super clean guy. Super clean guy. And my wife let's, not let's let's really let everybody know how clean you are. Like I'm OCD clean. I, I am. I'm, I'm a little overboard. A oh, little overboard. There's like, normal. Like, well, I'll be together and he's vacuuming. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Brandon. Out of all the things to be, though, is overboard clean a Every bad time one? Brandon takes a sip, Manny wipes the cup mark. That's not what I... I'm not that bad. I'm not that bad. No, but I do clean the floors a lot because I feel bad that people are walking on dirty floors. That legit makes me feel bad. Anyways, but that's how I was raised. My mom raised me to be like, you know, keep the house clean, especially for your guests so that they don't feel uncomfortable. And is not like that at all. So she'll leave stuff on the table. Like right now, y'all don't see it, but she'll have stuff on the table. She'll have stuff in our room. Our room is never clean, ever, ever, ever clean. And it gets me stressed out. And so- Okay, I, we need a preface. I've seen it clean. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Only when Brenda, uh, our, our house cleaner that's comes. That's not true. That's not true. <laughs> but also, I want to preface for people listening and watching. I hope it's good, babe. You ruined my flow. No, no. Because I'm talking about when you say it's messy. Remember, everyone, he is OCD clean. So what he okay, thinks let me is explain messy. messy. Let me explain messy. Messy is I've done laundry, right? Because I uh-huh. do the laundry at the house. Uh-huh. And there's three baskets full of laundry that'll sit there for a week. Uh-huh. And then there's clothes on the couch. Uh-huh. Okay. And then there's clothes on the little table, uh-huh. right? Then I go into the bathroom and there's clothes in our tub uh-huh. that don't belong in the tub. They're clothes that need to get dirty. So there's Then like- I go into the in the closet and then the, the, the dirty clothes. laundry is full and then there's clothes on the floor. So, so what we're saying is... It's a dirty ass room. As, That's what exactly, we're saying. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> yes, you explained a lot of clothes. I just want people to it's know a lot of dirty. that there's not like oh, Tell dirty, them about the hair. Tell not, them about the hair. Hold on. There's not like dirty plates of like breakfast from last no, week. No, but tell them about the hair. Not, tell hold them about on. The hair. Tell them about the hair. Breakfast from last week and like nasty, just like moldy. Th- it's not like that. It's dirty though. Okay. Like you wouldn't show it to no one. We wouldn't take a picture and Instagram it. Okay. Right? Okay. But and that's then what I, the hold on, Jackie on wants to say something. I'm just saying he just expects the laundry to be done. I no, I so do the laundry. I expect the probably. I expect the laundry to be put away. <laughs> We're talking about right. within the first put away. within the first couple of days, right. not a week and a I half. I hate putting laundry away, but and then Me also, too. so my hair. I have long hair. It falls out on the floor. Yeah. Like even when I'm not thinking, I and it ju- I sweep it and it goes away and and it comes right back out. Mm-hmm. I sweep the hair up and then my hair falls out again. So and there's always but it stays on there. There's always hair on the floor. Always. And then Manny will be like, oh. Bang my socks and like go crazy. Because once you get hair in the socks, they never come off. Hair on the floor. I but know. Any I girl do the listening to this knows that your hair just falls on the floor sometimes. Hey, this podcast is not called excuses. This every podcast is called piece of hair after every time we just okay, but Queen, look wait. to the left. So what I'm saying is, I have the expectation of you. I do have the expectation, and sometimes I get frustrated. Sometimes I get annoyed. Sometimes I get all these things. But at the end of the day. Those are expectations that I have to, like like B was saying, I have to regulate because I do understand I am a different breed of clean and not everybody, like when we go to your family's house, everybody's cool with like it being a little messy for a second. You know what I'm saying? Because we all understand that everybody's in a, in a group and we're all in a house and, and it's just going to get messy. Me, I'm like, oh God, we need to clean this house. This is too messy, you know? And so that's just how I was raised. But I have those expectations of you that are not necessarily fair, though anybody who leaves clothes in a hamper for a week after it's clean is no longer clean anymore because it's all messed up and now I got to rewash it. Why? I'm just saying because they they get just like, it's just sitting there in a freaking basket all on top of each other. I'm just saying it's just not the best. So it's dirty again? So I feel like it is dirty it? again. I feel like that's what the Ooh, smell is. We're going to take I a poll. So. Yeah, let's take a poll. <laughs> do you immediately put your laundry away after you do it or does it stay on the chair in your room? Or Three does it loads stay? later? Come on. I I'm currently in a, have three loads of laundry in the hallway. You guys are here. horrible. <laughs> Thank you. you. Guys, I, uh, so this is not Angela's messy. This is you are on one. 
That expectation still, okay, that, but my, what I'm saying is I do agree. Most of the times we get in arguments, most of them is because I expect you to think like I think. Yeah. Most of the arguments I, I can admit when I get upset with you or when I get frustrated or when, I, when I'm short-tempered is because I literally expect you to know what I know and to think what I think. And I yeah. feel like most relationships, if you're honest with yourself, that is why you are arguing because this other person can't read your mind you and you expect them to or they don't they yes. don't know what you know and they can't figure it out fast enough or you think you're smarter like there's so many things where I'm like I almost did it today I almost did it today good thing I caught myself oh thank god when you when you asked me how to when you asked me how to like close out of that app cuz you got the new what? iPhone 11 remember and you're like how do I close oh. out of it and I'm like well babe when the phone goes sideways, that means the bar is now at the bottom on the side of the phone. So you got to come out on that one. But I want to say, really, babe? Really? Oh, I'm so glad you it's didn't. So I probably would have stabbed you with whatever it's sharp object I could iPhone. find. No, that's, but you see how good I am? You see how oh, good I learned? I learned. I learned. Because I could have. And what's interesting is that problem that he's talking about, that he thought that I should know better literally since I've had this new phone for two weeks, I've been trying to figure out how to do this. I'm like, man, I don't know how to get out of these apps when it's on its side like this. And I could not figure it out. And if you would have went off on me on that, knowing that I have been struggling trying to figure this out, <laughs> I probably would have been so triggered and I probably would have reached for something sharp. Yeah. Mm. That, that's so true though, because it really is like, it's either that what you're saying of like, I feel like you should know what I know. Again, the last little argument that we kind of got into me and Maddie was I was trying to order Chipotle <laughs> and like, <laughs> I was asking her, I was like, yeah, Hey, Chipotle. I was like, what do you want? Like, I'm going to go swoop it up or whatever. And, and I was like, Hey, what kind of beans do you want? What kind of rice? She's like, it's whatever. I was like, Pick one, like pick a bean, pick a <laughs> rice, you know? <laughs> and we're talking on the phone. And I was like, I was in a rush. So I was having to order it super quick on the app so I could go soup it up. And she's like, I don't care. It's whatever. I was like, you get to choose. <laughs> and she wasn't understanding like, hey, you get to choose. She thought I was just like there. And I'm, she's just like, hey, pick for me. And so I was just like, okay, no. Right now you get to pick what you want. So I need you to pick a rice and pick a bean, you know? And she was like, I could tell she was getting a little bit flustered with my tone. <laughs> and so... <laughs> Finally, we decided whatever, and I was like, thank you, and I just hung up. <laughs> so didn't even think about it, but later, as soon as she comes home, she goes, wow. <laughs> She's like, you were, you were pretty, like, well, I forgot the word she used. She's like, you were really short on that call. And I was like, I'm super sorry. I thought you understood, like, I had, I, you could order whatever, you know? But it had to do with everything. I thought she knew, like, hey, you can put whatever in. And the other thing is unspoken expectations. Yeah. You know, like you're demanding something of somebody that you've never even voiced, you know? Exactly, so yeah. it's like a lot of that stuff in marriage, you're learning early on, you know, like, oh, this person likes this or this person does this and all this stuff. And you're thinking, you should know what I know because my mom taught me that when I open the door, you're supposed to walk through first, you know, stuff like that or whatever yeah. it is. And so those unspoken expectations, man, those are killers sometimes. Those are real killer. And a good example, actually, Jaki and I were talking about this recently, is like you go to share a story with your husband or your wife and you subconsciously expect a certain response, right? I did this cool thing. And then Manny will go, cool. But I subconsciously was hoping that he would reply with, no way, that's awesome. And he didn't get excited about the thing that I was excited about. So then I'm disappointed, but then I get defensive because I'm like, well, forget it. You don't even care then. And then he's like, what do you mean I don't care? I just said, cool, but it's fine, whatever, who cares? But I didn't go say, I'm going to go tell Manny this story and I hope he responds with no way. I didn't say that to myself, but subconsciously I had an expectation of how I wanted him to respond. And because he didn't respond the way I wanted, I got disappointed, which turns into defensive, which turns into an argument. And that's an unspoken expectation. Unspoken and it is completely unfair to then judge the other person 
based on some type of unspoken ideology that you have in your head, right? You, Jaki, you were talking about the same thing about yeah. you felt like your husband should know that when he opens a door, you're supposed to walk through first. And what was his response? I wasn't taught that. He wasn't taught that. And she couldn't believe that he wasn't taught that because in her world, that was normal. That was just a duh. But in his world, it was not taught. So my statement to her was, okay, now reverse it. And this is something that we have a hard time doing. We do not like, and it's the thing that we get taught at the base level, which is treat other people how you would want to be treated. So if he slipped, if he flipped it and gave her some scenario of like, you didn't know this about Mexican culture, and you're going to be like, well, why the hell would I know something about this? Well, you should. He's allowed to get mad at you now because what you didn't know. It's the same way. Like when I, if I am going to put someone, if I'm going to put my wife under this type of expectation and I'm going to hold her to it, then I better be able to meet every single expectation that she has because now she is allowed to call me on any mixed expectation. And I just don't know about y'all, but I don't want to live under that. I'd rather just be like, you know what? I This is an expectation call. And especially when it's not spoken, it builds, it builds into this this residue of, of, of negative reaction then. Yeah. Because you won't even know it, but you're going to feel so hurt because there's so many times that the expectation was not met that mm-hmm. now not only do you have a lesser expectation of him or her, but it's founded on negativity. It's they don't care. It's they don't want to do it. It's they don't want to work. They don't want to. They don't want to be who they're supposed to be. When in their mind, they're like, I didn't know. Like, I didn't know. If you would have told me and then I didn't do anything, then you can say, I don't care. But once you tell me, you know what I'm saying, that gives them the opportunity. Hey, this is important to me. So opening the door and letting me go through, that is important to me. If you don't do it after that, then you're showing me you don't care. So I have a question. So, but what if you, because you said that if you want to be treated, treat people the way or expect you know, treat mm-hmm. people the way you mm-hmm. want to be treated. Mm-hmm. But I have more of a servant's heart than most people. Mm-hmm. So I expect people, like if I'm going to the kitchen, I'm going to ask the three of you if you need something while I'm going. Right. However, most people don't. They just go to the kitchen, get what they want, and then they come back and you're like, you didn't even ask? Mm-hmm. And then my husband's response was, well, you saw me go to the kitchen. Why didn't you tell me you wanted something? And I'm like, you, sh- you should have asked me if I wanted something. And then we get in this fight because... Right. I expected him just to consider me, mm. and he expected. And so, me at, to speak at your up. point, it's your. So now it's <laughs> your point. Now it's your job to now say, "Hey, this makes me feel loved." When right. you consider me, when you when you ask those little things, like in situations just like this, this is a teachable moment. If you're going to get something, just asking me, "Hey, you want something?" will mean the world to me. Yeah. And then give him time. It. And it's not easy. Look, and still to this day, and it's, this is the hardest thing because I, <laughs> I do it, but just in new school form, okay? So to this day, she wants me to write her love letters. But I tell her I love her all the time. We text I love you all the time. I feel like once I go to the actual letter of it, I'm like, I already said this to her 30 times today or 30 times this week, but she wants this damn letter, and I still haven't, I still, I'm not good at it. I'm not good at that, but I'll do everything for her in the world except for writing this damn, this you letter. Can do post-it notes, like, and it's funny because it, it, I get this mad at gets myself. into love languages though, because like, I don't respond to some of your love languages like that, but I do to you as I would want to be. So for instance, like sometimes when Manny goes on a trip, I'll get a card and I'll write a nice letter to him and I'll hide it in his toiletry bag or I'll hide it in his suitcase because I would wish that he would do something like that to me. And Uh. I remember when we went to Australia for a month, I was like, oh, he for sure snuck some notes in here. Like I've left enough crumbs throughout the couple years. I got not one note in my socks, not one note in my chonies, just think about nothing. And I was so disappointed, but that was my expectation. And based on like, I do this for you, so I would hope you do it for me. But then there's so many things that I don't do that are your love language, like buy you gifts. Like gifts is your love language. And I never, Mm -hmm. I hate getting you gifts. 
Yeah. It was my love language. I don't know what it is now. I have too much stuff. I don't need stuff. I think oh, thank God. I, <laughs> I, what is the love language that is just um, do unto others? That's what, that's, I think that's the most important thing to me now. It's just do unto others. Whatever love language that is, that's what I care about the most. You know? No more expectations. I literally have the lowest expectations of you. Okay, thank you. No, 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 no. No. I mean, like, I'm self-sufficient. <laughs> I mean, I'm self-sufficient, queen. I mean, like, you don't have to do anything. I kind of feel like at this point, I believe that I you love, love me. You too. <laughs> Lover, you know what I mean. I don't mean I have, like, you're, you're not going to do I have anything. the lowest expectations. Right. But so that goes to your point. Yeah. That, like, if you were to take away people's expectations, like, so he just said what I feel like, I don't have any expectations of you anymore. It feels sad. No, but that's not, what, what I mean is that, <clears throat> There are normal. The most important thing for you to do for me is to treat me how you want to be treated. That would be the highest form of anything. So when I when I say I have no more expectations of you, I mean, I I believe that you love me. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't I don't I'm not like looking for it in things in love languages and all that. I just I just believe that you love me. You have shown me. We've been married nine years. I believe it. I believe it. Now the most important to, thing to me is. Uh, spending time, right? Spending time together because I know you're busy. And then considering the things that I say and ho- and and making them gospel. Like if I tell you I feel a certain thing and this is important to me, that it would become so important to you as much as it is to me. Like that to me, I'm, I like I, that's why I'm saying I'm past gifts, I'm past stupid whatever. Like I don't need any of that. To me, when it all comes down to it, is is my expectation would be uh, what is important to me now is becomes in- incredibly important to you. Like that's an expectation that I don't think I'll ever want to get rid of because I feel like that's the like the key to a marriage. You know, for me in my mind, there's two kind of because again, me dropping expectations of Maddie and me dropping expectations of Jordan are two different of expectations. Mm. One for Maddie, it's uh, us being in a marriage. There are like expectations that I had of her to meet needs in me that I needed to be meeting myself. So Mm. when you're saying I'm self-sufficient, that's what I'm hearing of like, Hey, I was expecting you to fulfill needs in me that honestly I was responsible for. Yeah. Mm. Because at times I feel like I'm unlovable. I was expecting affection from you. But the truth is, even if you gave me that affection, I'd still feel like I'm unlovable. unlovable. Yep. Yeah. It's because, like, again, that feels better. <laughs> those needs are, <laughs> those needs are. Babe, I explained myself. Me. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Don't mess no. up Brandon's thought. <laughs> <laughs> and I realize a lot of those things that I've been working through fears, doubts, all those sorts of things were reflecting in my expectations I was having for Maddie. Mm. So she was never meant to be God for me, mm. she was never meant to fulfill me. That's not her role. Yeah. yeah. For Jordan, it's expectations of who I hoped he would be. Mm. So again, those aren't necessarily the needs that need to be met inside of me. They're more of mm-hmm. like how I picture you and who you are intentionally choosing to be are two completely different people. Yeah. So the longer that I hold on to this image is the longer that I can actually embrace who you are and the beauty of who you mm. are in this moment. So I'm going to choose to let go of the image so I can have a hold of reality and who you actually are. So to me, in in my mind, there are two different expectations. That's very interesting because I feel like most relationships fall apart because the person never meets the expected uh, persona. The the expectation of who you are, the grandness of what I wanted you to become. Most people don't become it. And then the other half feels like they lost out or they're missing out, or they got some substandard version of you, and they don't see what you just said, some of the amazing things that you are, yeah, that you really are doing, like things that that you will only notice when that thing is out of your life. And then you're like, well, damn, this person did this and this and this that I didn't see because I was, I, my expectations were up here. I wanted them to do this, this, and this. It's the 80-20 rule. You know, you always give up 80% of the things you have for the 20% of you don't, that you don't have. And uh, it's the grass is greener on the other side thing, you know? So when you're in a relationship and you're like, if he would only do this, if he would only do this, if you objectively sat down, or she or he, sorry, if you objectively sat down and, and marked off all the things that they did do, 
I am pretty sure that will always outweigh the things that they're not doing. Yeah. It's just really hard for us to let go of the expectation. Mm. Yeah. Because it's a selfish thing. And I, yes. I called it, I called it when she said it. She goes, That's not how I see it. And I was like, exactly. You are thinking of yourself first. And I, I was getting an argument with Ange about this too. I'm like, if you think about you first, if the first thing that you go to is you, this is not how I see it. This is not this is not what I think or what I believe, or this is how I see it, then you are forfeiting the whole perspective of marriage. The perspective of marriage is, can I lay down my life enough so that I can start seeing things the way you see it yeah. or appreciating life the way you appreciate it so then I can then fully love you? Because if I can fully love you, then and only then I can I can l- let the door open for you to fully come and, and love me. But what gets in the way a lot of times is our selfishness. We get selfish. And if you ain't doing it my way, it's it's my way. And if you're not doing it that way, then you don't love me or there is a problem. And I'm like, what happened to the freaking vows? What happened to all this stuff of like, I just want to be the perfect person for you. If you wanted to be the perfect person for me, or if you wanted someone else to do the same thing for you, you would have to learn what is perfect to that person or what is important to that person. And then you would have to emulate that. Yeah. And that has nothing to do with you. It has zero to do with you think about anything, which is why I get so pissed that I'm still not writing love letters. It upsets me. (laughs) I do everything. I clean all the cars, all the laundry, clean the house, do everything for my wife. I pack for her. She doesn't pack. I cl- I pick you out pick the clothes. You pick out my outfits. I pack my own suit. No, but I have packed for you before. <laughs> like saying, twice in, in eight and a half years. Okay, now you're just downplaying. Now you're just downplaying. No, you do all the things. I do a lot of things, babe. Don't downplay me now, okay? <laughs> Don't like take the credit. <laughs> many I do buys, a lot of- Manny buys all my outfits. You- but if I do, if I buy one good thing, he'll go, oh, when did I get you that? I'd be like, no, I bought this with my <laughs> So. That's because I'm confused. I'm used to I'm used to hitting all the wins, um, but either way, you know what I'm saying. Like, like that's the problem. You know, I really feel like if we can get out of our own way and yeah. truly, truly want to see that person, all the things that are important to them, and it's like me with cars. I love cars. She does not understand why I love cars. She doesn't understand the romance of it. She don't understand how I feel when I'm in it. In a car, she don't understand when I got all my. I have like fifteen pair of driving gloves. You know what I'm saying? I have driving shoes, a couple pairs of driving shoes. You know, I have Porsche shirts, jackets. I have everything Porsche. You know what I'm saying? And I have this love affair because it's like it's a romantic thing for me. There's something romantic about the 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 car and and that and the relationship with the car. And what would mean the most to me, and she is doing this. I think we're still going to Germany for my birthday, but joining me in what, what, what really brings me happiness and makes me come alive and trying to understand it. You may not ever get there, mm-hmm. but if you just try yeah. to understand it, then it would go a, a further way than, than you would actually believe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it would take you having to throw yourself in the back seat and being like... What's interesting is that's such a funny story he kind of brought up a little bit. Um, there's a video of us on our wedding day. And what I said in the video was, I want to be the wife. The exact. The exact wife that Manuel needs me to be. And he would throw that in my face Still in like do. every argument. Still and do. instead of trying to actually figure out how to be the wife he needs me to be, I would say, if I could do it over, I would take that out and I would not say that. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> Yo, because that's on YouTube. I'm like, every time I, I try to play, I'm like, babe, you said this. You said this. What happened And they go, oh, I wish I didn't. <laughs> no, I'm, you were on the right path. But, <laughs> you're on the right path. But you're almost you're, there. You're right. Like, it's selfish like you actually have to lay yourself down to find out how do i be the wife that you need me to be eight and a half years later still not being exactly that but that's what marriage is and as we're talking about expectations and stuff you you have to lay yourself down and that includes your expectations well i kind of feel like the root of expectation the very root of it is selfishness yeah. It is saying that my thoughts for you 
are more important than your actual yeah thoughts. That's really what it is. And then too, even if like seeing potential in people, that is essentially saying that I have the best picture of who you can be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And you're saying that over right. someone else's life. You right. know what I'm I did saying? That, like, I did that against my even... group for so long with, with, with Blanca and Pablo. Like, I would get so angry because I would expect them to be like me. Yeah. To write as much as I do, to to have the 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 type of uh uh go, 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 yeah. which not that they don't have any go, because they totally have go. Right. But because it didn't look like my go, I was disappointed. Yeah. But then I finally, like probably by record three, I sat back and I was like, man, what would happen if there was three Mannies? It would be a shit show. It would be so bad. It would be and super then I clean. Started, yeah, be super, super clean. <laughs> clean tour buses. But we'd be fighting to write verses. We'd be fighting to do business. We, you know, and, and then I just started saying, okay, okay, well, let me just look at what they, what they do have. Pablo is one of the most likable people in the world. I've never met anybody who meets Pablo so and doesn't like him. Blanca is the sweetest, most caring, loving person. I don't know anybody that doesn't like Blanca. And she's and hilarious she can, too. Both of them are hilarious. Hilarious. They are hilarious. Singing wise, she can sing her ass off. Melodies, stuff that I can't come up with. I'm not. I'm not no singer. You know what I'm saying? And I just started seeing all the the positives and the strengths, and I'm like, these are not strengths that I have. Yeah. But they have them. So stop acting like there's some it's some kind of lesser thing. It's not a lesser thing. Yeah. Learn learn what's great in people and celebrate it. You yeah. know, really celebrate it and work from that place what's already there. Yeah. Because if you work from that place and you fall in love with that, then anything that comes extra after that, that's just like a cherry on top. But when you fall in love with the person as they are, not for like who they're going to be, cuz 9 times out of 10, they don't become that thing. Yeah. And your love is not going to change them. It's, it really will not make them elevate as much as you think it will. Yeah. It will not make them elevate. The only person that can make them elevate is themselves. They'll have to find it in themselves. But if you fall in love with that original person, that thing that they have, there will never be a time where you will be disappointed. Everything yeah. else that comes after that is just like, yeah, they're learning. They're growing. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. But other than that, it's like, I love you like for who you are. Yeah. I love you for who you are. <laughs> No. Even though our upstairs is still dirty right now. No, I cleaned it. You did clean it? Yes. I haven't been up there in a while, so I'm going to check. He was up there while I was cleaning. Thank you, babe. Yeah, I was purging. I was giving, getting rid of stuff. Thank Your you. other favorite thing. you thing. know that's my other favorite thing, <laughs> getting rid of stuff. <laughs> you know, the other thing I think about expectations is I think it unfairly puts other people in boxes. Mm. And I think, too, it's like... You might have known this person for hella long, and you've just only known them to be like the caterpillar. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like you've stuck them, and that that image is so even. Even if it's not potential, maybe it's even the opposite way. Yeah. Like I've known you for hella long. We've been through so much together, yeah. and I see you as this. And because I expect you to be this, and even ah. though it might be a good thing, they've now evolved into something. And from your eyes, it may be worse. Mm -hmm. From their eyes, it might be better. Yeah. Regardless, they're not the caterpillar anymore. They're a butterfly and they're going off to somewhere else. You know, they've evolved, but because those expectations can almost serve as a box or even a more graphic term as a prison mm. for these people. And they're like, yo, quit putting me in this box. I know I don't like boxes. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I think even for me of like letting go of that, it's like, oh, I am breaking open this box so you can evolve into what you see is best for your life. Yeah. And again, even too, like if you're seeing the world, you're, we're all seeing the world through a certain lens. Mm -hmm. From the context of which you were raised, the people who you're surrounded by, your influences, your role models, all of that. And so it's a very small vision. As much as anybody would like to say, I'm objective. I'm open. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. open. Yeah. yeah you yeah. know? <laughs> so you're seeing through this very tiny lens and you are looking at this person and what they can be. And that person is so much bigger. So you're only seeing a part of them yeah. in part. That's so interesting hearing you say that. And when you're talking about you with Jordan and your dad and everything you're saying is so valid, if you flip it, 
I feel like your dad could have the same exact conversation about you not living up to his Absolutely. expectations of you and the box that he put you in because yeah. I'm sure he imagined, I know what's best for Brandon's life. Yeah. I can see it, Brandon. I can see your potential. You could have my ministry when I'm done. Like I can see you thriving if you would only just live up to your potential. Yeah. Yo, that makes and me scared. And you're the butterfly out here. Absolutely. I be getting scared that people be thinking that. Like I was thinking that this morning. I was I was going through Facebook, going through all my old friends from Faith Assembly and my old pastor, you know, which I still see every time I I, I come into into town. Pastor Johnny, woo woo, Faith Assembly, Mainstream, yeah. Orlando, all that stuff. Um, but I get a little scared that I'm like, I know I've taken some liberties. I've 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 ran. I've ran with the with the wolves, you know. I still love Jesus or whatever, but I know that it's way outside of what they do. And part of me is like, I wonder if at some point they've seen my little craziness, and it's like, damn, another one bites we, us. We, even though <laughs> I talk to him <laughs> all the time, <laughs> like I try to make sure that he knows, like, hey, I'm still connected, bro. Hey, hey me connected. and Jesus, we good, we good, <laughs> we goody good. But I, I get nervous yeah. that I'm like, man, I disappointed these people. Yeah. Like at some point, like. They expected me to still be doing the the normal thing, and I'm not, you yeah. know. And I get afraid that I'm letting them down sometimes. Mm. That I that I'm not meeting their expectations. Hmm. That is such a good perspective shift, because you think about it in the ways that all the people in our lives that we have expectations for that we feel are disappointing us or letting us down. If you go on the flip side, chances are probably even more likely that you are letting someone down right now in your life that really loves you. Yeah. That you are failing to live up to what your yeah. parents hope for you to be. Yeah. And again, you're the only judge, really. You and spirit are the only judge of like, if you're doing what you're supposed to do and if you're living up to your own potential. Yeah. You know? And so, yeah, man, that's, that's, so, that's so interesting. Because yeah, I know for sure in a lot of ways, I've disappointed my dad, mm -hmm. you know? And again, that was... It, it took a second for me to get through that and be like, okay, well, who am I actually living my life for? Am I happy? You know, mm -hmm. am I going out on what I think is best for myself, you know? But man, that's so interesting. And so even just hearing that right now, and I haven't formulated this thought, but just processing that right now, of like, man, in the same way that I would give them grace, I would hope that they would give me grace. Yeah. And I would give myself grace and they would give themselves grace, you know? Man, I try, now that made me think right now, I wonder if my, I don't think my parents are disappointed in, in what I've become. Like if I had to think about it, if I really had to think about it. I'm starting to think about who have I disappointed my, <laughs> I think there's some friends that I've probably disappointed for sure. Yeah. That for whatever reason, they think that, yeah, I, I haven't met their expectations. I know, I know one in fact in my mind right now. Yeah, there's, there's probably a lot more that I don't know. There's like some younger people that I discipled like in the past who are disappointed with me. I've had like a spiritual son rebuke me. Oh. Yeah. Like that was like a new experience for me. Like he came at me with verses in hand and was like, bro, I got the receipts. Like you're in error and I'm here to rebuke you as a fellow brethren. And I was like, oh shit, I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry I let you down, but this is what I know to be true at this point in my life. You yeah. Know? And, wow. um, yeah, it's crazy because I feel like I'm doing good, but in other people's boxes, I'm not. Man, and that that makes you that makes you question your own. When you don't live up to expectations, that makes you question everything that you are doing, especially if what you are doing is not like popping or winning. Yeah. Like, say you're setting out into a new, you're setting out to a new road, and that road is not uh, filled with flowers yet. It's just a very dark, cold road. And you are letting people down along the way, but you're following what you feel is 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 the right way for you. A lot of you would probably think, man, when I was going the way everybody expected me to, things worked, or at least right. kind of worked, right? You know, and 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 it wasn't all the way good, but at least it appeared to be good because everyone else was going that way. So I felt like I was sharing, and everybody else is winning. But the second I decided to think about what I really wanted. Then I started missing people's expectations and I'm on a lonely road doing my own thing. Mm -hmm. And my own thing is taking a while 
to manifest or to become something. It's like you're on this journey with the whole group. The whole flock is going this way. And if you experience a loss, it's okay because you all are experiencing it because you're all on the same path. But if you're going this way by yourself, if you experience a loss, it looks like failure because you're by yourself. But you're just going through the same journey they're going through and eventually you're going to get through that loss into a win, but it just looks differently, appears differently because you're not doing the same so then I would dare to say also then the the next statement would be uh, throw away the expectations of yourself and where you thought you should be. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a lot of- The unhealthy expectations. The un- yeah. yeah, the unhealthy yeah. of where you thought you should be. Mm-hmm. And if you're not there, yep. then it's like you've let yourself down because you expected mm-hmm. so much. You're 40 years old and you're not married yet. Mm-hmm. That's an expectation that you're like- Something has to be wrong with me at this point. Mm-hmm. I've ruled out everything else. I'm winning. I'm successful. Or I got this. I got this together. But I'm not married. Yeah. Or the expectation like right now for me, it's like, man, I should be killing it right now and whatever it is. And I'm killing it in some things, but you know, my passions. Mm-hmm. Uh, at work. I should have been promoted by now. I, I should. Maybe. I was funny because I was, I was watching um, the roundtable, the actor's roundtable, Hollywood mm-hmm. Reporter. And Jamie Foxx said that. He was like, as comedians, we we look at each other and when one of us blows, we all think the same thing. Damn, man, why didn't I get the blow? Yeah. He's like, I remember when Eddie Murphy blew and I was sitting back like, damn, there goes Eddie. And just sitting back mm-hmm. like, when's it my turn? Mm-hmm. When's my turn? And at this point, you know, he didn't he hasn't had anything. He just got um that's when he got Any Given Sunday, which was a dramatic role. It wasn't yeah, even was, comedy. That was huge. Yeah. And he was like, when I first tried out for it, Oliver, Oliver Stone thought I sucked. He was like, he thought I sucked. He was like, man, you are not good. Because <laughs> he's, he's a comedian and he's like, he goes in there and he's, he only acted for TV. So he comes in there like a TV actor yeah. trying to do film and Oliver Stone's just like, you are not good, but I'm going to give you a chance anyways. And then he got good. Wow. It was really funny. He gave hmm. him a shot anyways. I well, because I, I guess Jamie Jamie was just like, I was committed. I was going to do this and I was going to do it well. I didn't get mad when he said it. It fueled me. And I became a great dramatic actor so much so that now it's hard for me to come back to funny. Now people ain't even looking at me for funny. You know what I'm saying? It was very, it was, it was kind of sobering, like the expectation that he had of himself. It's like, man, if I see people around me doing something and I'm not close to them, there's something wrong. I'll tell you, it's real easy to let go of the expectations of yourself when you're not on social media. (laughs) Because I've been on this social media detox and it's been amazing. I believe it. And I have the luxury of not knowing what any of my peers are doing. I believe it. So I'm not thinking about what I'm not doing because I don't have the constant reminder of it in, in my feed all day long. So all I have is the present moment right here and who I'm with. And that's it. So wow. it's easy to let those expectations go when you're not reminded of them constantly. Man, and when you really think back of how we were created, we were not, I mean, the most, it, I mean, I, I, I do understand when the word talks about don't covet your neighbor. Hmm. All you had was a couple people to look to the left and the right. You couldn't access the world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You couldn't access everything that's going on. Right. Now the, the amount of information we have only points to what we don't have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is insane. And it's funny because as you're doing this fast and I'll find myself, the second I go into that thing, I'll cut off the, I'll cut off Instagram and I'll be like, this is stupid. Like, this is just dumb. Like, I don't, if I didn't have to, I don't think I would be on it. If I didn't have stuff to promote, I don't. Because now my feed is only filled up with old classic Porsches <laughs> and... um <laughs> That's that's literally all I look at. Some one percenters. Yeah, it's like it's really, <laughs> and like inspirational quotes, you know, hustlers, real estate, you know. But yeah, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, so moral of the story: let go of the expectations of yourself. Yeah, give yourself that's good. Give yourself room to appreciate where how far you've come. Not not how far you have to go, but how far you've come. Like give yourself space to do that. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. For those of you that are in relationships, uh, ask yourself this. Are you treating him or her the way that you would appreciate being treated? And I know that's such a... The way you expect to be treated. Yeah, yeah, really. (laughs) 
And if not, if you are okay, and if you're still that person who has the, well, I'm going, I'm, no, he needs to, or she needs to, whatever, then please don't be the hypocrite that is now upset when that person holds you to the same standard. Because then you're just showing all your colors at that point. Uh, living a life in expectation, like, and this is the unhealthy. We're talking about the unhealthy. We're not talking about like the good expectation that could translate into hope. Yeah. Right. Like hope for a better, you know, position, hope for success, hope for yeah. whatever. Manifestation. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the negative expectation that is a chain, that is a box, that does keep people feeling like they're constantly disappointing you, that they can never meet these expectations. Yeah. Appreciate people for where they're at, love them for where they're at, and then grow with them. Yeah. Really. I feel like that's the key. Mm-hmm. I feel like you're relationship is going to get better. Your friendship's going to get better yeah. now that you've let go of that expectation. And I've seen that like in my relationship with my dad, when I let go of a lot of expectations of him and he's not going to learn to process his feelings like I have. He's not going to own up to things that happened in childhood. He's not going to, as much as I really wanted him to, because I thought that would be the road to healing. If he would just own up, and take responsibility, we could finally get on our path to healing. But when I let go of those expectations, the path to healing began because mm. we had like clear communication. We were just being friends. We were just hanging out. What movie have you seen lately? Like just having friendship because I didn't expect it to look and be a certain way. So I imagine that's going to happen. The for irony your is friendship. that all that happened was that you got out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> you just threw away the selfishness. The expectation of this guy who didn't have the knowledge growing up to become yeah. a better man. You just kind of let him be okay. Like, it's okay, man, that you didn't know. Yeah. It's really okay that you weren't taught these things. I don't hold yeah. it against you. You got out of the way and things got better. And the whole time you were looking at it, if you could just get better, yeah. if you could change, if yeah. you could change, this would be better. This would be better. Yeah. But now on the other side of it, it was just you getting out of the way. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. It's been a good conversation, yeah. you know? Hey, thanks, thanks, thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate yeah. it. That was a good one. Hey, uh, well, appreciate letting, you guys. letting go. I feel, I feel free. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hey, feel very free. We appreciate yeah. you. This is my favorite drink, so Shreddy I've already balls. like ran out. But we'll give a little, a little toasty toast. Uh, hey, let me get a little bit too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here, hold on. If you are, if you are, thank you. Watching on the tubers, we appreciate you. On the YouTubers, please smash that like button. Yes, yeah, smash that subscribe. Like button. Subscribe. <laughs> Hit the bell. Get the notes. That's what? short for notification. Oh. I don't know. I don't, I've never heard a YouTuber say that. I just literally just said that right now. And if you are not, hey, please share the podcast because that's literally how we grow. If you like what you hear, um, send it to a friend and hopefully we'll increase the size of this table. Hey, we pray that you find a seat at the table. But if you don't, you are always welcome at ours. Cheers. Love ya. Last night I fell asleep too late Thinking about the money I made And all the things I bought for me So much that I didn't need And I can't seem to stop the chase Got so many plans I've made But what if these are pointless dreams Really just the end of me End of me I lost so much of my time I would feel presidential, but nobody even noticed 40 grand out the window, damn. Uh. 
Who the hell I'm trying to impress? Spending too much, stop the bleeding, that's a cotex. I'm trying to shop to hide my insecurities of never making it to where I thought that I deserved to be. How the hell I work so hard to see my friends start to pass me. When I've been doing this twice as long, them are facts. We never see things how they are, only how we are. And everything we do is so great, nigga Gatsby. But what if we could realize that our path was designed to give us happiness that actually would last? Nobody just 